All right, next up, uh, Lucinda Clark. She is, yay, yeah. <laughs> Lucinda is a uh, cut paper artist. Uh, she also is a self-employed professional gardener uh, and a maker of things. For about 20 years, she's been experimenting with cutting paper into intricate designs. These focus primarily on uh, interconnected images of trees, insects, and animals. She uses these in many ways, but most recently, she's been collaborating... <laughs> She's been collaborating with her uh, husband, cabinet maker Bill Clark, nice plug, uh, to apply them as stencils to the furniture that he designs and builds in his Portsmouth wood shop. Yeah. Lucinda's philosophy. Someone please get me a beer tonight. Um, Lucinda's philosophy, we are all at our best when connected to the rest, is manifest in our work. And let's hear from her. Warm, warm hand. I have one little thing to read first. It's the definition. Oh, Thanks. It's the definition of community. I grabbed out of the dictionary earlier today. A community is a natural population of plants and animals that interact ecologically and live in one place. It's a society at large. Does it sound okay? All right, I have to read this. I'm sorry. It's like lots, too much to read. Paper cutting is a traditional and contemporary folk art that is practiced throughout the world. People use knives, chisels, scissors, and even sheep shears to create a huge variety of styles. I made this one for my choral group. It's a really easy to see all the different images and is typical of the traditional style. <laughs> there once was a man who would sit up on the second floor gallery of the old Portsmouth Library cutting paper designs that he dropped down through the open space to float to the reference desk below. <laughs> this is a photo of his work that amazed and intrigued me. It's still there. It's at the reference desk. Many traditions use the symmetrical nature of folded patterns to create abstract decorative designs. Unlike machine-generated design, hand-cut patterns are repeated but never the same. Realistic images morph into stylized representations. Bugs are great for that. Insects, reptiles, and amphibians quickly became my main focus, but of course, not everyone loves them like I do. Dragonflies and butterflies are okay, but not in their larval form. At first, I squeeze as many of all of them as possible into each snowflake. They are interesting, but crowded and confusing. Then I realized that the abstract designs created by the negative space between the bugs was as important and as interesting as the positive. These two perspectives can't be perceived simultaneously. They're separate worlds, but are dependent upon each other. Some people need help to see the two views. There are six critters in this one. Although my snowflakes are generally symmetrical, because of the folds in the paper, because of the environment, no two creatures are identical. For instance, frogs on one side are always fatter or skinnier than its twin. They're the same, but also unique. Here the paper cut is pinned to the background, somewhat like an entomological specimen. One year for the first night poster competition, I chose to combine some iconic Portsmouth symbols. As I worked on the piece, I started thinking more and more of how all the parts tie together to form an interdependent relationship. It's the only paper cut I've named. I call it Community Means Connection. I'm also, along with the bugs, I'm also a bit obsessed with trees, and I love to do landscape paintings, but trees are not symmetrical. It makes cutting them in the snowflakes a challenge. So I began cutting them like paper dolls, folded back and forth in long lines. Suddenly there were forests, communities. Okay, now I'm getting deep, but wait, it gets worse. <laughs> To make the surface more interesting, I sprayed the tree lines with all sorts of paint and noticed that the images left behind were pretty neat too. I'd figured out how to use my paper cuts as stencils, which would lead to many new projects. This was when my husband 
who's a cabinet maker at the Button Factory, and I figured out how to use my paper cuts as stencils on his furniture. This looks a lot like marquetry, but it's much, much less complicated to achieve. Our first collaboration was a dining table with an Egyptian theme. The stencils are cut from painter's tape, mounted on the wood, sprayed with a light body pigment, and then removed. The curly maple shines and shimmers in the body of the images and also through the paint. Our next collaboration was a dining room suite with a botanical motif. Bill's strong architectural design influence can be seen in the geometric shapes that he added to my critters and plants. The designs wrap all the way around the table. We moved on with a pair of cherry love seats. The paper cuts are again set on curly maple to highlight the beauty of the wood. This time we arrange the images in vignette type groupings. Each stands alone, but interacts with its neighbor. All are related within the frame. It's their environment. To really appreciate the abstract designs, I've searched for a good way to display them. Sandwiching in glass, framing, or laminating in plastic flattens and detracts from the tactile quality of the paper. I came up with a simple lantern design where the paper cuts are stitched onto parchment so that the candlelight can shine through. Another neat aspect are the shadows that highlight the abstract design quality that I love. These transform and continually evolve from the original as the light moves, as all shadows do. Nothing is ever static. Using a sun printing technique, I'm dyeing white silk scarves and imprinting them with the stencils. I try to use images that people are comfortable with, but I also always include some that are less popular. I want all to be accepted. We need to make room for everyone in an inclusive community. There are layers of images here. Some of them are clearly seen, others are obscured. To me, it's like looking into a garden. It's a complicated world full of life. All are interdependent and cohesive. All need their own space, but also need to be connected. When the stencils are cut, they each have a backing. Here I've stitched them together to form a chandelier, like a swarming of bees or, a, or wintering monarchs. I use Facebook to share my own art projects, explore the work of others, and get inspiration. For me, it's all about community and connections. As a professional gardener and crafter, I work alone. But now, partly due to Facebook, I've found new and rediscovered old bonds that enhance my life and work. This is a folded snowflake in process. The whole thing can fall apart if connections are cut. Now I'm cutting large designs from Tyvek house wraps so they can be displayed outdoors. They are like giant spider webs, worldwide webs. It's all about the connections. This is what I think is true. We are all at our best when connected to the rest. Thanks. <laughs>